I've been sick this week with a bad cold, but fortunately my 3D printers keep working even when I'm sick. So I printed two AA battery holders, one featured on Thingiverse and one that I found. And this one on Thingiverse, I modified it and made it into a dual color print on my dual extruder Flashforge Dreamer. I'll show you how I did that, plus what I did to print this one on today's Filament Friday. Here's the first one I printed by user Adonarams that was featured by Thingiverse. It comes in three pieces, so you have to put it together. I brought two of the pieces in to simplify 3D, the outer case and then the lettering. And these are designed to be printed separately and then glued together. But look at you can see through it on one side and it's, hol it's solid on the other. Very strange. But I chose the uh, place surface on bed and made them both flat. And then I looked through the bottom of the bed to line these guys up. Because like I said, they're supposed to be printed separately and glued together. And I'm doing this as a single print with dual extrusion. So I had to manually line these up so they're perfectly in line. And then once I had that, now I'm going to use the dual extrusion wizard that's built into Simplify 3D. So there's actually two prints here, as I've mentioned. There's the label, and then there's the cover. So now I need to make these into one process, or really a group of processes. So I open up the dual extrusion wizard, and I select the FlashForge dual, dual extrusion profile. So it knows there's a left extruder for the cover and a right extruder for the label. Now I uncheck this align modules or models because I manually aligned them. I don't want them messing it up. So I uncheck that. So now I've got a color one for the shell and color two for the lettering. So let's click on color one and we'll do the settings for that. So I've got the FlashForge dual and I've got both extruders available to me. So now I'm going to choose the left extruder for everything because this is going to be printed with the left extruder which has a gunmetal gray matter hackers PLA. 25% uh, fill, 0.2 layer height as showed, uh, 200 degrees C on the filament and 60 degrees on the bed. Cooling is enabled because it's PLA and I'm going to print at 40 millimeters per second. A little bit slower for this machine, but that's what I'm going to use for this print. So now I need to do the letter. So I go to color 2, which is part of the group, but it's a separate process. So now I'm going to edit that process. Everything's the same up top. I'm going to do the same 25%. And well, you know what? Let me go back to the tools here. There's a tool 0, which is the right extruder, and a tool 1, which is a left extruder. You'll see that show up in a little bit. Now the layer height, I'm using the same 0.2, three top bottom layers. 25% infill, but right extruder for all these. And temperature wise, I want a little bit lower for this. Uh, this is glow in the dark filament I'm using. So I'm using the same setting set, a little bit cooler for that filament. And then when I prepare to print, I select both of them. And here it is, the dual colors. It shows a tool zero, which is right extruder, and a tool one, which is the left extruder. Now anyone familiar with this wizard knows it automatically makes an ooze shield. That's a separate shield or print that goes around the outside so it can change colors without affecting the main print inside. But since this is mostly one color all the way up, I disabled that. And then once I disable it, I realize, you know, I probably should explain that to somebody who may be new to this. So let me show you that uh, using the same print, only I'll enable the ooze shield to show you what that looked like. So let's edit process settings again. And this time I'll just go in to the additions. And here's the ooze shield. I checked that box. And now I'll slice this again so you can see it. This is what by default it would have this enabled. And you see it's got this ooze shield. And so as it does dual prints, it can mix the, the dual color doesn't kind of blend into the print. But because there's very little dual color in this, I said, why waste that plastic? So I just shut it off. I went back, unclicked it, and then sliced it accordingly. And that's how I printed this thing. I needed to print the third piece, and here it is on the bed. For this, I chose to use Filamentive's Green Recycled PLA. And they're a supporter of the channel through Patreon, so I really appreciate that. But I really love their filament. It prints really good, and it's recycled, so I feel good about it. And this one, they designed supports into the design itself. So I didn't have to add supports. I could just print it on its side. Three hours and 11 minutes just for this piece. And here's the two finished pieces. Now I need to assemble them together, which turned out to be a little tougher than I thought. Bed this up a little bit because I thought it would just snap together. It's got these locks at the top, but I couldn't get the base to line up first. So I had to pop it apart a couple times and then finally got the base to lock in and then the top clipped in place. So it's a good design. It fits nice and tight, but it took me a little longer to put together than I expected. 
So overall, I think it's a pretty good print. It's not perfect by any means. I had a little bit of flaws in the base, but uh, here's a, a spinning view of it so you can see how it looks. It's not a bad print. And at 0 0.2 layer height though, I expected it to be a little bit smoother than this, especially on the face of it. And the glow in the dark, I, I shined light on this and here it is glowing in the dark. So it does work. It worked really well. So the dual color print worked fantastic. So now let's see if it works as a battery holder. So you just drop the batteries in and I did this, I sped this up because otherwise this would be boring to watch. But I just did about first, I don't know, six, seven batteries and it seemed to work perfect. These things slide to the side easily. There's nothing holding the battery side to side, which actually was kind of a pain. But once I filled this thing up like I normally would do, now watch what happens. You pull out two batteries and then it gets stuck. You got to stick your finger in there to get two more out and then stick your finger in there. So the top batteries were interfering with the bottom batteries not good so I decided to try a different design here's another design I found by user Jay Galick and this one is really interesting because it's got ramps in it to guide the battery so the top ones can't crush the bottom ones and interfere and it's designed with these ramps like to it so it's designed to not have supports and it's even got a wall down at the bottom so the batteries can't slide side to side so I decided to just bring this in print this with the same filament of recycled PLA only this time I did a 0.3 layer height so I could print this faster because I was running out of time. I did a 30% fill, temperature to 200 degrees. I did it all from the left extruder so this is on the dual extrusion or nothing. And I even printed it to 60 millimeters per second, the faster speed. And when I sliced it, it looked really good. The base of it is solid. It's not hollow. So the base of it is solid. The 30% is probably overkill. But it'll be nice and solid for holding the batteries. So I... I printed this it said 3 hours 15 minutes 22 meters of plastic and I got to tell you for a 0.3 layer height this thing came out beautifully I love the way this print printed just like this straight up it was in the printer just like this with no supports I really love this design it's this thing is designed to be 3d printed without supports and I love designs like that but the real question is would it work would it hold the batteries so let's try that so I loaded them one by one, and it's kind of cool because they zigzag down their ramps, and it actually worked perfectly. You can see it zigzags all the way down, and once this thing was full, it it two batteries short, so it's it's two less than the other one would hold, but I never had the problem with the batteries being blocked. So these are just two of the battery holders that I found on Thingiverse, but functionally, I like this one better. This one has some nice features, so maybe combining these two into one project, that could be fun. I'll save that for a future video. If you like what I'm doing, click on some of my other videos over here. Take you right to it. And if you want to help support the channel, a dollar a month, just click on the Patreon link. It'll take you right to my Patreon page. And for all my Patreon supporters, I'm doing this sick. I'll do it through rain, snow, sleet, or hail, whatever it takes, because I appreciate your support. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.